Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Jan here. It's already almost noon, and I was already digging into the switching cabinet quite a lot. I didn't film too much, or to be honest, I didn't film anything because it was mostly ripping around and making a plan for today. So, as you can see in here, a huge amount of the PLC did leave. Um, I do leave this in here. I made up my mind about that because this is uh, the new brain, the new controller we're gonna use. Our big tree tech is the brand, SKR is the model. And we're gonna use this integrated computer to run this thing. So it's gonna have USB over there and we can use you see this has got uh, monitor output and usb in and stuff like that so we can use this to generate g code and have it live stream to the controller itself so this way i'm not disabling this completely if i do run into problems where I could need some more computing power, more IOs or whatever, I can just use this and feed the signals through here or make this standalone, I don't know. As of right now, I'm leaving this in here and we're gonna hook up this one. Back in here, I did clean up. I know it does not look like I've cleaned up, but let me show you, I did. Uh, I got rid of all these cables. They're hanging here loosely. Um, because after studying my old documentation, I figured I would be a lot faster to just uh, start from scratch. Um, but I can leave all these wires in here. I just have to uh, get them to a new spot. But all the cables are long enough. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to be filming about this. Right now I'm trying to figure out how to wire these. Uh, they have these really small connector and I'm looking for leads that fit in here and don't take too much time to make them all fit. Um, I guess I gonna update you when I did some interesting progress. Well, we'll see you from there. So let, you, let me get you updated on the Z-axis assembly. I'm in a bit of a hassle with, to get this back on the machine. I was messing around with this one pretty much. Um, these holes seem to be right from the factory equipped with helicoils. So they don't have the threads inside. I guess it's a magnesium casting. But this one was ripped out and also I think this scratch has come somewhere caused that. So I was filling this uh, this out of here. I had to grind it out with the um, a diamond with the diamond tip on the Dremel. And I think I've worked this out. I mean, there's five or th six threads in there. You probably can see that. But I have longer screws, and uh, the threads down there are fine. Uh, so this should work, but I was finding some damage up in here on the the uh, sliding surfaces and Here there seems to be I know you can't feel that like I can this is smooth and this is like porous um, My guess is that there has been humidity under here and that has like impregnated on this coating so what I'm trying to do is I got sandpaper 
which is a 3000 grid and I'm gonna go with isopropyl alcohol um, try to keep it from the rubies and uh, well yeah try to get this off I'm gonna be very very smooth with this let let me try this okay that's way better than before uh, it's now smooth everywhere and I can I can see that I haven't really taken down material from the coating um, but with this now being really clean I can see that the upper side, no, the, the lower side has some damage on the most outer pieces of, well, contact area. So this is also, I can feel this. So I guess the, there's a start of a damage. The coating is kind of gone. So I have to keep an eye on this. I'm doing some photos right now and after some hours of runtime I will re-evaluate this. And if this is a problem we'll have to think about a solution. It's pretty much 24 hours later. So yesterday I did a time lapse of me lifting the Z-axis assembly onto the machine and everything was going smoothly but as it turns out I thought I would have repaired that or at least have it set back in a working condition but um, when I had this on a machine this was the last screw to put in and um, the helicoil that was in there did move again and that way I was aborting this. Um, I did it the proper way this time. My neighbors happened to have this uh, thread repair kit and I was able to get the old helicoil out of there which was quite a mess. It wouldn't have made any sense to film that. I couldn't barely see that myself. Um, but I got a new threading insert in there and now I can get finally this thing on the machine and <laughs> get rid of all the mess. And now it's on there, solid. It was a good fix after all. Other than that I did some progress yesterday. Didn't film too much. My Mac base for the camera doesn't stick to any of this so uh, also electric work most of the time is just not that interesting also uh, there were so many interruptions there were times where I just was just running around like a headless chicken so as you can see um, I got the um, controller hooked up it is sitting on these two 3d printed things to get it a bit raised uh, the servers are hooked up the end stops are hooked up, fan, heater, and this is the main DC in. Um, it got all the wires ran to um, these connectors. These go through the big 32 lead connector to the back of the machine. And what I ended up doing here is get rid of everything that was there before. Um, I mean, I did leave all the original leads. I don't want to um, get them to run them all again. That would be a huge waste. But I disconnected everything, made a new um, circuit plan, and uh, started from there on. And I'm quite happy with it. So, um, as you can see, X axis servo is already hooked up as well as Y axis servo. Uh, the cables in here are a bit messy though, but we'll, you'll see why that is when we get the drag chain hooked up. Then I was waiting on the Z-axis to come back on the machine because all of these wires are going up there. Um, they drive the servo, 
I got the option to switch these pneumatic valves up there, um, as well as the proximity switch for Z-axis. All of that is in, in this style. And the other part is this chunk, which will somehow be connected to the business end down here. This is everything from temperature sensing to heater to, to fans. What I have to add right now is a four lead connection for the stepper motor that's gonna be sitting here. Boom, progress happened. So I was able to get the cables hooked up to the Z-axis servo. Did put in some connectors up here. So next thing will be proximity switch, which will go in here for the Z-axis. Other than that, I got rid of some of the junk at least. I will hook up the extruder next, proximity switch, get the Arduino, run for the first time. I have to set up monitor and keyboard and such. And we'll have a look if we can make this move today. Next thing to do is we're um, removing the couplers, check all the connections again and give current to the Arduino. So that's what we're going to do and hopefully we'll have the servos running. It's almost 10 p.m. In two hours it's going to be Christmas. And I don't really know what's going on in here. I've been fiddling around with this for the last, let's say, six hours. And I can't really get my head around this board. It's the first time I'm using this. Everything is working. I got the limit switches hooked up. I can run hot end. I can set temperatures. Everything's fine. But I can't get any of the servos to run. And I just plugged in this very old 8-bit ramps style board on an Arduino Mega. And it works right away. It's really strange. I don't really know and I'm quite, quite done for today. Well, this should have been my Christmas present for myself. And I'm super proud of what's happened. This just looks ridiculous. I love this. Also... For a last minute drag chain that works really proper. Here, this. I haven't quite decided to cut this yet, so it would have been pretty much fine. And compressor still on, so I could have run it today, but I don't want to risk it with uh, some kind of a janky setup right here and do bonehead mistake before going to bed. 
So I guess I have to sleep a night over it, have a little celebration tomorrow and revisit it on like 26th or so. I don't know, so see you guys then. Welcome back. So there were a few days of of holiday involved. I was here for like 30 minutes last three days. It's Sunday the 27th. And I hope you guys had a pleasant Christmas holiday. So, this was bugging me. I couldn't get this thing going before Christmas. And I was here to like, well, short after noon. But I had a few issues and I want to talk about what is happening, what the status is and what I'm planning to do. So first of all, let's dive into why I chose this exact board in the first place. Now wait, we have to start before. So, why I was choosing this over the PLC. The experience I made in the first in the first round of building this machine was that with the PLC you have such huge computational power and uh, things like that. That is a wonderful thing, but when it comes to building a 3D printer, you do have to program everything you want to have on your own. And in my case, that was even on a quite unknown interface. So I was really having a hard time on this. I finally figured this out, but it took me a long time. To get rid of all the problems, I choose a 3D printer board this time. Because you can run a Marlin firmware or any other kind of 3D printer firmware on these and have all the functions basically already programmed into that, have it fully configurable and it's really, really easy to set up. The parts you can get for really cheap and usually they work pretty good. I was choosing this exact model. That's an Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4. I was choosing this. Wait, let me get the, the lights hooked up. I was choosing this for a number of reasons. First of all, this is a 32-bit processor. Uh, so you got a lot of computational power, which come in handy with all the um, moves it has to do on the, on the servos. Um, also, it is 24 volt based, which uh, is a good thing for this switching cabinet because I don't have to do any downstepping or use a lot of different transformers and such. Also, I was looking to buy a unit that didn't have the integrated um, stepper drivers on there. The uh, higher priced models you can get with like the Trinamic 2209 or 2130 Trinamic drivers. They, are the, they have the chipset sorted onto here. And which is really convenient. You can set like um, the stepper's current and such in software. And that is absolutely great thing to have on your 3D printer. I do have that on all my self-built machine as well. But in this case, I was just looking for the signal of step and direction also, like enable, um, to have that wired to the surface because I was just interested in these signals and feed them directly into the servo system I choose. And that is a very convenient way to um, basically have all the uh, pros of a servo system, but also uh, the ease of use from such a inexpensive board, which is literally set up in five minutes if you don't run into any problems. But I did run into problems, and... It took me quite some time to figure out what it is. If we look down here, it's the first time I'm using these Phoenix Contact style connectors and I'm really happy with how they're set up. It enabled me, this is my like ground connector uh, where I can distribute all the ground hookups and this is the 24 volt. So it's really easy to just hook up all the sensors, don't have to run uh, a separate wire for everything. But these bridges in here, I don't find my pliers right now, but um, they were put in the, like the first detent position. 
I was having connectivity through the system, but I, it took me quite some time to realize that these were just like barely touching and I was getting really inconsistent results with this and I was chasing this for hours literally. And I found that these weren't fully pushed in and that gave me so much trouble. Um, but when I did find out I was, everything was fine and I could move on. The second problem I got, and which is basically the killer right now. This is the servo we're talking about. It's a JMC unit. And what's, what this basically does, uh, you have these styles of, um, of switches determine how many pulses this thing translates into a certain degree of rotation. In my setup, I'm using 5,000 pulses per one complete revolution of the motor shaft. And what this thing needs to fully operate is basically, it of course needs some input voltage to operate. Other than that, you just need basically two signals. And that is um, the direction and the pulse or step signal. If we have a look at this diagram, this is basically a step and a direction signal that is transmitted to the servo from the Arduino. And as you can see, each of these pulses it's sending corresponds to one increment we've set on these, on these switches here. So basically each of these pulses is letting this shaft rotate one five thousandths of a revolution. It always has to catch one positive edge and one negative edge to be uh, like reset in its circle. Um, the other signal it gets is the direction. And this is basically just um, if you got like an active high, you may turn uh, clockwise. If it's an active low, uh, rotate counterclockwise. So this is working proper. But in my particular case, I'm having the problem that the threshold of the servos is somewhere like here. Usually, and with all the other projects I've ever done with Arduino and these, these servos in particular, um, this amplitude was somewhere like above four and a half volts, which is more than sufficient to let these uh, catch the signals. But this particular unit over there is just having an amplitude of around 2 volts. I couldn't find any information on the internet why that is or if I have a faulty unit or whatever. The prob problem is, in my case, that the standard drivers, these H-bridges, um, do work on there but I would have to build an entire amplifier circuit just to run these, which is fine, but not if you want to get your machine running in a short amount of time over the holidays and don't have any spare parts on hand. Also, I don't, I have to do this on six channels for now, and I don't want to have all the transistors loosely in there and may cause some issues. So that's why I'm going to abandon this board for right now. I want to have this printing in 2020 and that's why we're switching over to this little fellow. Like basically everything I didn't want to have on there. Uh, it's an 8-bit board. It's one of the oldest styles you can find. Um, it's a RAMS 1.4 unit. But I know for a fact that the combination uh, of this board and this servo works very fine. I have run this several times. I know the amplitudes are, are matching. So what are we going to do in order to get this machine running and get all the, the early problems sorted out? I will hook this up, get a fresh firmware on there, and I will report back.
All right, so what you're looking at right now is the first real moves it does in terms of running a program. As you can see, I'm feeding G-code and Z-axis as well as Y-axis are working properly. See, this is doing its thing. Also, X-axis is working. But uh, I'm, of course, missing this piece, which I'm going to be machining tomorrow. Uh, the stepper driver is moving. I have to fix a few things here and there. For example, the uh, air dryer is constantly blowing air out of here. Uh, this is just quite annoying. But other than that, the extruder is heated, uh, it's feeding. I just have to reverse this, uh, the direction of this stepper, but just, uh, I did calibrate this one. Yeah, so I guess these are the last minutes before we can really print something. There is not just much to do. So I guess uh, I might leave you with a last cliffhanger. I wanted to upload this video on Sunday, which is today, and it's already kind of late. So maybe I get this done, maybe not, but I'm 100% that I'm going to do a really big, I won't say a really big print, but a completed print this year in 2020. This is my set goal. So I will leave you with the last cliffhanger and I'm going to get you updated as soon. Yeah, that's the compressor. So on that note, guys, have a nice weekend. See you then.